Perception here, one year two. It's me, Mr. A, back with um, story time for another day, and uh, Selena Young's Whistling in the Woods, which is our book for today. Here are the woods, and they're dark and they're grim. Here is the path, and it's long and it's thin. Here are the trees that line the path, so tall they touch the sky. And here in the woods, all dark and grim, are fox cubs enough to make ten. Sneaking and creeping and chittering and chattering, out from the woods the fox cubs come. First one, then two, but three is late. Four and five arrive and they wait, till at last comes three, skipping along. Then the rest follow, six, seven and eight, with nine who's quite shy and ten who is brave, and slowly but surely they all get home safe. At home in their den, Mother Fox makes the tea, the tatties and gravy are bubbling in the pot, when in come those fox cubs, hungry as can be. They wash their front paws, twenty in all, then they hear their mother call. Tea's on the table. After tea, Mother Fox shoes them out to play. She wipes all ten noses and warns them, be careful cubs, don't stray. All at once, eight pricks up his ears, a strange snuffling he hears. Whatever can it be? Suddenly out from the bushes comes something in red, sniffling and snuffling like you wouldn't believe. Eight creeps towards it, ten spies it too, and he tugs at its vest and asks, Who are you? I'm rosy and I'm lost, the red thing replies. Have you never seen a girl all lost and alone who can't find her way home? The little cubs shake their heads. Well, no, we never have they say. The fox cubs start creeping and tiptoeing in, and curiously they circle the snuffling thing, and as they get braver and bolder, they push and they pull and they pinch and they prod. Oh, stop, Rosie cries, I want to go home, and she sobs and she sniffs and she stamps her red shoe. <coughs> so the little cubs think and they hum and they ha and they put their ten heads together. While they dream up ideas to get Rosie home, the daylight is ending and the moon is arriving. In the cool of the evening, the clouds start to gather. The trees are swaying and the wind whistles softly through the grass. That's what they all do. The fox cubs all clap and Rosie laughs, for they've thought how she can be found. So ten paws and one little hand each pick a lush blade of grass. Three goes first and shows them all how to use it to whistle out loud. Hold it up to your snout, take a deep breath and gently blow the grass, like so. Eleven blaring whistles ring out through the trees. They do it again and again, oh it's fun. They whistle and whistle for help. Soon they hear the soft thud of footsteps on pine needles, and out from the trees steps Rosie's dad. He hugs and kisses her and says how he's missed her, then Rosie remembers her friends. But when she turns round, there's not one to be found. She calls them in vain and tries to explain to her dad, but he doesn't reply. He just hushes and shushes and whisks her back home. <clears throat> All warm in the kitchen while Mum gets the tea, Rosie tells them about her adventure. I was lost and alone when out from the trees came ten friendly fox cubs. They helped me find Dad. They taught me to whistle. Mum and Dad nod their heads and agree, but they don't really believe her. They're grown up, you see. <coughs> but later that night, when the house is in darkness, the fox cubs creep into Rosie's garden to see if she's safe. They're chattering and whistling, but Rosie's not listening. She snuggled down deep and fast asleep. She'll never go off and get lost again, even if she hears those friendly fox cubs whistling in the woods. <coughs> the end. It's hmm, a nice one. All right, thanks very much for watching, and uh, I'll be back again tomorrow with another one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.